I'm going to jump into it because um, I've really got 15 minutes to minister to you, maybe 20 minutes. So we will be out of here about qu- by quarter past, quarter past uh, nine. So, so bear with me for a moment. I'm really going to stick to my notes. So we started with a series uh, called uh, pos- p- Positioned for Purpose. Positioned for Purpose. Now, now, just saying that, I want you to just, just quickly, Positioned for Purpose. So right now, I want you to think of your work environment. Just quickly, think of your work environment. Think, think of your uh, relationships. Uh, just quickly, just think of where you find yourself. Just, just think of your daily routine. I'm positioned for purpose. I'm positioned for purpose. And I hope you've, you're experiencing in your spirit what I'm experiencing, that there's so much more, so much more than just our normal vocation, than just our normal relationships, than just going through the day-to-day routines of life, that there's so much more because I am positioned for purpose, that I'm purposefully placed where I find myself right now. It might be for a season, might be right now, but God has placed me there and he wants to use me in that area mightily for his kingdom and for his purpose. Getting it? And I think it's so vitally important. Thomas Carlyle said this, a person without purpose is like a ship without a rudder. Now, that, that, that quote actually goes on. It says, like a worth, like a nothing, like a no man. It's like, man, there's just no purpose. There's just nothing happening. And I want to encourage you because we need to, we need to live purposeful lives. We need to wake up with a song in our heart. <laughs> I mean, come on, church. We, we need to wake up singingly, not hurtingly, not wonderingly, not overthinkingly. We need to wake up with a song in our heart because we don't know what the day holds, but we know that God's going to do something in that day that's going to be absolutely amazing. I, I guarantee you, if you go to bed uh, tonight, tonight is Sunday night, uh, it's, uh, I think it's today's the 14th. I, th- I think it's the thought. I'm not exactly sure. It's the thought. Don't worry. No, it's just, don't worry. 14th. So tonight before you go to bed, just think differently than your normal routine. Think that, man, God is so amazing, so good, so wonderful, so great. And uh, man, Lord, uh, uh, he says he gives it to the children in their sleep. His children in their sleep. I mean, come on, church. He's preparing you for the next day. And when you wake up and there's a purpose, and I know, man, God, there's, there's going to be opportunities for me to shine for your kingdom and to be witnesses. Man, it changes everything. Listen, life is meant to be lived. There are too many just, Barely surviving from day to day. No, God has called us to thrive. And it's got nothing to do what you have in this life. Thriving is from the inside out. If my spirit thrives, if my internal disposition is in the right position, things change and things look differently. I can start enjoying life. And so if we want to truly understand how to enjoy life, we need to understand this, that that in this life, Everything we go through is, is a test and a trust. Our good times is a test. We are being tested how we how we're handling the good times. And when we go through the valley, the valley times and the and then the and the times that doesn't feel so great, it's a test. It's a test how we're gonna handle the most diverse situations of life. How are we testing? Then it's a trust. Who are we actually trusting in that situation and in that circumstance? It's a trust. So if we understand our purpose, live out our purpose, we understand that everything in this life is a test and a trust. Even the good and also the bad. It's a test and a trust. 
And it's so important that in this test and this trust that we always need to understand who I am. We need to understand our identity in Jesus. Without our identity in Jesus, we'll fall back into our default setting and it'll all, it will all be all about us, how I feel, my emotions, my circumstance, and, and, and that's what the enemy uses against us. Come on, church. That's exactly what he uses against us. And then we, we don't feel so purposeful. It's like, well, uh, uh, man, there's just, I, I don't feel like, uh, you know, I've, I've got a purpose in, on, on this earth. Because the second thing in, in, this, in this test and this trust is to understand that, um, that we're important. We're actually important to God. We do matter. Your life matters to Him. It matters to Him. Do you know how I know that? Well, He died for you on the cross of Calvary. He laid down His life. There's a price tag on your life. And your life matters. And then lastly, the impact. We need to make an impact. Why are we here for? Why are we here for? God has placed us purposefully in the lives that we're living in. And so last week we looked just quickly at identity. And I'm just going to touch a bit on it just now. But, but it's so emphatically important that we need to live a life that is purpose-driven. Purpose-driven. We need to get it. We need, we need to stand up. And even in the times we don't feel like it, man, that's what we got to do. And so this morning we are going to, we are going to spend a bit of time what... God values, because what we value in life actually shapes our tomorrows and our future. The value we place on stuff, listen, on not just stuff, but the, the values we live by is truly the things that will shape and force and, 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 and truly, uh, uh, can I say, determine and defies how our future will look like. Everyone would have received a, a card this morning as you got in. The on that card is just the, the church's um, uh, mission, a vision and mission statement, and then there's seven values. As a church, we value stuff. It's valuable to us. Can I just quickly, how you determine what you value? It's the things that you spend most time on. Those are the things that you do value. So you'll see on that card, our first value is the Word of God. We value because that's truly the basis we work from. We don't work from a manual from head office saying this. No, no, no. We work from the Bible. And we stick in the Bible because the Bible is our ultimate authority. That's our ultimate authority. And so you, you'll find there's, there's seven values that we as a church that we value, that we spend time on. We, we intentional about that. And it's so important that we need to understand that value shapes our future. It shapes our vocation. It shapes our relationship, our relationship, and it shapes how we handle the stuff that God places within our hands. And so, our theme scripture um, for this whole series, Colossians 1 verse 16, it says, For everything, absolutely everything, above, below, visible, invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him. Listen, listen, and read it together with me. And finds its purpose in him. Does it, stay, you, does it say you find your purpose in your, in your spouse? Come on, church, help me. Does it say you'll find your purpose in your vocation? Does it say you find your purpose in the, in the stuff that you have in this world? It doesn't say that. It says that we find our purpose in who? In Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What? That should be mind-blowing for some people. Because a lot of people ask me this question, what is my purpose? Simply serve Jesus. Build a relationship with Jesus. Nothing else can satisfy like Jesus. Because when you get close to Jesus, you'll find your purpose. And it's simple to be a witness for him in Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, and all the ends of the earth. We are called to be witnesses. That is, our, that is the purpose. Anything, about, anything more than that is a, is a bonus and it's a plus and all that you and I are, we are just good stewards of what God has given to us. So church, I want to be like Moses this morning and I want to take you to a portion of scripture in Deuteronomy 30 and it says it's so beautiful and I'm going to read to you from verses 15. Uh, he gets the congregation together, the congregation of Israel, and he says, listen, I need to, I need to download some stuff with you this morning, and maybe that's what I'm doing. I, I'm getting the congregation of, of Life Church together, and I say, and, and this, is, this is what, what I'm going to say as, as Moses said it, today I'm giving you a choice, because values and determining values and what you need to value is a choice, and he says today 
I give you a choice. You can choose life and, and success or death and disaster. I'm commanding you to, to love the Lord God, to live the way he has told you and to obey his laws and teachings. You are uh, about to cross the Jordan River. Listen, you are about to experience the blessings and the promises of God. You're about to experience that and take the land that he's giving you. If you obey him, you will live and become successful and what? Powerful. I hope you're getting it. Because as I'm reading it, it's like, man, I've never read it this way. God wants me to, to live a successful, overcoming life on this earth. God wants me to be powerful in His Spirit. God has called me for so much more, but I need to choose. I need to make a choice. I, made, I need to make a choice how I'm going to live. It goes on in verse 17, it says, But if you disobey and refuse to listen and be led away to, your, uh, to, to worship other gods, let me give you the Clark's paraphrasing, to do your own thing. Because these days we need to be very straight and, and very real with one another, to do your own thing, to, to, to depend on your own thinking, to have your own opinion, and your own opinion is much more important than God's opinion. Uh, that's, what he's, that's what he actually means. When you start looking for something else than Jesus, when something else becomes more important than your relationship with Christ. I hope you're getting there. It says you'll be destroyed. And come on church. How many times have we, have we tripped up? Have we fallen because we've, we've done it our way? And we followed our pattern. And all that, all that the word of God is just follow me. Stick to me. Get close to me. And when you follow me, even the, the most diverse things in life, man, you're going to flourish through them. You're going to walk through them. I'm not going to remove them. You're going to walk through them. And you're going to come out on the other side, and this is maybe a prophetic word for some in, the, in this house this morning, you'll be okay. You are going to be okay. You just need to walk. You just need to walk and trust God. You will not live long in the, in the land uh, across from the Jordan River um, where you're about to occupy. Let me give you the Clark's paraphrasing. You will not experience the promises of God that is so available to you and me every single day. When we follow our own way, the promises... It's like, it's like God says, okay, well, just do your thing. Just do your thing and see how it works out for you. Just, just do your thing. He goes on, I am now giving you a choice between life and death, between God's blessing or curse. And I'm calling heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. And then he encourages them. He says, choose life. Can I help you? Choose life. Choose life. And, he's, and life is... Is Jesus because in John 10 10, let me just give you the, the New Testament uh, equivalent of it. In John 10 10, Jesus says to, 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 the, to the people, He says, Listen, the enemy only comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Listen, church, when we don't follow God, when we don't allow His Spirit to move us and to, and to shape us and to form us, when we, when we don't follow the, 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 the teachings of God's Word and apply it within our lives, listen, the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He entices you. He shows you. And it starts with your identity. And I said it, I said it last week as well. You know, it started as, it started as early as Genesis, Genesis 3 when he, when he spoke to Eve. And he says, Eve, um, uh, why can't you eat? He says, well, God said we're not allowed to eat from that tree in the middle of, of the garden. And he says, well, who said God said that? Because he knows, he knows that if you eat from that tree, listen, you will be like God. But listen, Genesis 1 tells me that I'm created in the likeness and an image of God. Amen. Jesus himself finds himself in, 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 in Matthew, Matthew 4. Matthew 3, he was just baptized with the Holy Spirit. It says Matthew 4, he was, he was led into the wilderness. And the first thing that the enemy attacks is what? If you are the Son of God. Listen, the end of 3, it says uh, that, that the, uh, heaven opens and uh, there was a voice coming out. This is my Son who I'm well pleased. And it says that the man and, 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 the, and the Holy Spirit uh, came down on him. And, and, and I mean, it just happened. And now the enemy comes and he says, if you the Son of God. If you. If you that good Christian. If you are so steadfast in God. That's how he works. And church, what we need to do in every situation and in every circumstance is choose life. 
You see, we need, to, we need to come to a place where we value. It needs to become a value within us. So I want to I wanna, just quickly, I'm going to run through it. I've got five minutes, maybe ten. Uh, five minutes, maybe ten. But I've got four life-shaping choices that we need to make every day. It's, and I wanna, uh, k- 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 did you hear my wording? Every day. Not once every second year. Every day we need to wake up and every day we need to, I choose life. Lord, my circumstances looks diarrhea. Man, I don't know what to do. I choose life. Or maybe you're on a hilltop, but I choose life. Lord, I choose life in you. I don't choose life in this world. I choose life in you. It's an every single day thing. So if you've got your Bibles, just open up Hebrews 11. And I'm going to read to you from verses 23 to 27. And for our Hebrew, Hebrew word study people, you'll understand what I'd say today. Listen to Moses. The exact same guy that said to Israel, choose life. And this is what it says about Moses in in this faith chapter, in the the patriarchs of faith. It says this, by faith Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child. And they were not not afraid of the king's edict. Uh, By faith Moses, when he uh, grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And underline that. Underline that in, in, your, in your Bible. If you've got your cell phone, just underline it on your screen. And this, is, this is vitally important. This is vitally important. Listen, I'm going to take out four things. It's vitally important. He refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with all the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of, of sin for a short time. Underline that. He chose to be mistreated. He regarded his grace uh, for the sake of Christ as, as, as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Woo! Exciting. Because as God's children, we need to understand that there's a reward awaiting us. Come on, church. It's not just living a great life on this earth, but there's a reward that's that's awaiting God's children one day. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Underline that. Four things that he did. First of all, he refused to be known as Pharaoh's, uh, as, as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused. He refused. Now, I'm going to give you just quickly, refuse to be defined by others. Refuse to be defined by others. That means refuse to be defined by your past. Listen, let me just give you something to think about. People can can harm you, they can scar you, but they cannot ruin your life. Let me say it again. People can harm you. They can scar you. They can say stuff about you. They can do it, but they cannot ruin your life. Stop blaming people. Come on, church, stop blaming your background. Stop blaming where you come from because we do it ourselves. We have that choice. We have a choice to live the life of how other people see us. How other people, because if we want to be purposefully positioned, if we want to treasure values, listen, I need to be found in a place and a space where I truly understand. Listen, I'm not shaped by other people. I'm shaped by the word of God, I love Psalm 139, and if you want a psalm to read and just meditate on the psalm, Psalm 139, it, it really, whenever I read it, it still blows my mind. Here comes David, and he says, you have woven me together in my mother's womb. Man, that should say something about this amazing God, how he feels about you and me, how he feels, and, 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 I, and I want to encourage you. Listen, listen, we are not defined by our potential, by our mistakes, what people have labeled us, I am not the comparison of other people, and I'm not where I've gone to school. Even if I do love Adamantia. Adamantia does not define me. You know, they say if you, if you were in, in great college in Bloemfontein, you don't have to ask, they'll tell you. Well, I'm not defined by the school I went to. I'm defined by the, by the Word of God. And the word of God says, I am forgiven, I'm restored, I'm redeemed, I'm made alive, I'm a new creation, I'm a co-heir with Jesus Christ, I'm filled with power, I'm commissioned by the Holy Spirit. Listen, I'm appointed to walk in blessing and to be a blessing to everyone around. That's who I am. 
And that's what defines me, nothing else. It's a choice. It's a choice. We either walk in the promises of God or we walk in the fertility of our understanding of how people feel about you and me. Let me give you some scripture. I love it. Romans 12, 12, 1 and 2. I mean, we all know Romans 12, 1 and 2. But I want to I give you, I just want to give you another translation. It puts it out so beautifully. The normal translation would tell you, I beseech you therefore, brethren, to, uh, to give your life's living sacrifice unto the Lord. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can find the acceptable will of God. But listen, listen to the Philip's translation. Just verse 2. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold. But let God remold your minds from where? Within. So that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you, come on, let's say together, is good. He's got a good plan for me. And whatever, whatever he thinks about me, it's good. It's not bad. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm refusing, listen, to be known as... I am a child of God. I'm a new creation in Christ. That's who I am. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 says, Our purpose is to please God, not people. Okay, no, no, no. no. Wait, 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 wait. Come on, let's read that together. Our purpose is to please God, not people. Some of you need to write it down in bold letters. My purpose is to please God and not people. So, 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 ladies, you, you don't have to please your husband, please God. Because in the process of pleasing God, you'll please your husband. Husbands, don't please your wife. Please God. Come on, church, that's how it works. That's how it works. He is the one who examines the motive of our hearts. And that's why we can understand and know that the plans that God has for you, Jeremiah 29, 11, is good. The plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans for good, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not defined. I'm defined by the word of God. Secondly, Moses chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather to enjoy the places of sin for a short time. Can I just put it in, in a different wording? Choose, choose short-term pain for long-term gain. The, the greatest problem is this. We want, we want immediate gratification. We want the, the feel-goods right now. We want the quick fixes right now. That's how we programmed. Man, I want to feel good about it right now. No, no, listen, listen. There are some stuff. Listen, we go through stuff. We say no to stuff, and it might feel like, like it's painful, but it yields good fruit. And the problem is this, we, we, we have this inability to, to delay gratification. It's like we, we, we are so fixed on the gratification, we want to just feel good about ourselves and feel good about life and feel good about, no, 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 listen, listen, listen. Find your gratification, find your value in God. And when we, when we are faced with some stuff, listen, Moses could have been, listen, he could have been, uh, Pharaoh's grandson. He could have, listen, if, if you do a study of how, how they did life in, in that time, he could have indulged in so much sin and stuff. Money was not an object, but he refused. Listen, church, we either serve God or we don't serve God. The word of God says the, the path to him is a narrow path. There's some stuff that we've got to get into, into place in, uh, you know, in following him. Sin still stays sin. And we got to follow him. We cannot have one, one, one leg in the world and one leg trying to serve God. Listen, if you want to be, uh, be positioned for purpose and understand your position and that you're purposefully placed, listen, you got to follow God with everything. Every single detail of our lives. You see, Moses chose to be mistreated. And you and I need to understand that. And sometimes we go through the toughest times because we follow the word of God for our lives. And I just want to, I just want to say this. You and I should be, actually become products of our pain. That sounds terrible. That's not good news. No, 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 no. It's, it's, about, it's about, listen, I want to become a witness that I've gone through stuff. It was painful at first, but now, now it yields amazing, wonderful things. 
I cannot go to the gym. Oh, I loved it. Um, Helghard actually sent, sent on our men's group, he sent a video. Helghard, that, that was a good video. That was absolutely amazing. Uh, if you want it, speak to Helghard or speak to me. It was just absolutely amazing. This pastor actually got his, he, I mean, he, he's also in the gym like me. That I, You know, I've been gymming for about 15 years. I know you cannot see that, but... Uh, but I've been gymming for 15 years. I just let me say this. But you know what? He, he, there was a, a, guy, a, a guy in his congregation. But a man, this man came up and he asked him to take off his shirt. But he must check him. I mean, he's got, I mean, he's got muscles where there's no place. I mean, he's got muscles on muscles. It's like, man, he stands there. And he said this. We go to the same gym. We gym the same amount of hours. We use the same weights. We do everything the same. And then he took his shirt off. Can you believe that pastor took his shirt off? And I mean, he would look like me. And I mean, mar, I mean, boopy, I mean. And he said, listen, do you know why? Because this man takes serious what he does with his health. And when he walks out of here, his whole way of doing life is different he goes through painful things because you know what? It's pleasurable. Come on, let's be honest. Late at night, especially in the winter, laying in bed and, you're, and the warm blanket is on. Amen. And that, oh, that Cadbury's chocolate looks at you and say, eat me, eat me, eat me. Come on. And you say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, for I'm about to receive, I thank you. Something like that. Isn't it so? He says, but that man, he eats healthy, he eats healthy, he does everything right. He says, that's why he gets the benefit. Do you know why so many Christians don't live in the benefits of God? Because we're not living according to the word of God. We hear, we come in on Sunday, yeah, we go out, and man, for the first day we feel good. And then, yeah, by Monday, let me get the timing right, quarter past 11. Then it's like everything is out of, out of the window, and we start just, hey, it's been a struggle. No, no. Church, it's in the application. It's in the full application of the word. In the full application. Why? Because God will use this pain to grow you and me. It grows us. It's not there to break us. It grows you and me. Let me give you some scripture, Romans 5, verses 3 to 4, and I'm going to put 5 on there as well. We, uh, we can have joy in our troubles because we know that these troubles produce patience, patience uh, pr produces character, and character produces hope. And verse 5, and hope never disappoints. <laughs> hope you're hearing what I'm saying to you. Secondly, our pain will, will be rewarded one day in heaven. Listen, we don't look for now, for the gratification of now. We don't look for the, for the hey, the pat on the back now. One day we're going to stand before God. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says, These present troubles are quite small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us an immeasurable great glory that will last forever. Short-term pain for long-term gain. Come on, church. Let's trust God through the process and then choose, choose, choose what God values, not what culture does. Choose what God values. He values his word. Listen, what, the, what this world values is this. They, they value the pleasures of sin, sex, passion, and lust of the flesh. They value possessions, the treasures of Egypt, salary, possessions, and lust of the eye. They, they, they value popularity, prestige, and power, status, position, and pride of life. That's what the word of God tells me. Everything I am and everything I have, I'm only a steward of. I need to start valuing, valuing the stuff that God values. Listen to what God values. 1 John 2 verse 7. The world and everything in it uh, that people desire is passing away, but those who will do the will of God will live forever. Mark 8 verses 36 in the New King James uh, uh, Version says, Jesus speaking says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but he loses his own soul? So what does God value? What God values, God, he, he values God purposes is more important than popularity. We need to understand that our purpose on this earth is more, more important than popularity. People are more important than pleasure. Come on, church. And lastly, peace of mind are more valuable than possessions. Let's be honest. If I can have peace of mind in everything I do, when I go into my APSA, APSA app, I can go into my APSA app with peace of mind. 
Come on, church. That's what we want. To know that God is in control, man. God values, he values his purposes that he's placed on us. He values people. And listen, what he's left us is peace. And he wants us to live and function in this peace continually. And then lastly, we need to choose, choose faith, not fear. Sometimes when we go through stuff, and as I said just as we started this morning, that sometimes we feel that nothing is happening. And then the first thing that comes in is doubt. And it's always followed by his brother, fear. And when fear settles in, we struggle. I want to encourage you this morning. It says, Galatians 2 verse 16, it says, there's no one can please God by simply obeying the law. So we put our faith in Jesus Christ and God accepted us because of our faith in him. So what am I saying? I'm saying, listen, put your faith in Christ. You are positionally placed you are valuable god there's some values that we need to make it ours and 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 we've got to be steadfast on those things sean anderson said this he said we've been gifted with a power of choice in our actions in our thoughts and in our words the quality of our lives gets better or worse depending which direction we go with our choices listen church today i give you a choice life or death life or death you choose not me i've got to choose for myself and i've got to do it daily and someone encourage you this morning really do encourage you this morning man god's got a plan and we need to stick to his plans and his plans for our lives are good although people want to make it bad and the enemy will use anything to make it bad god's thoughts towards us psalm 139 if it could be counted it's far more than the kernels of grain that you'll find on this earth. So I want to encourage you this morning. Let's start valuing what God values. Let's get back into the normal things, into the simplicity of his word and trust him. You are an overcomer. You are victorious in him. And God's got a plan for your life. Amen. So come, let's stand. I want you, I really want you, listen, and I want to say it emphatically, you know what, you're going to, you're going to, yeah, I don't know how to put this, but by tonight, this word is out of your mind, and I just need to say this, we need to meditate, start meditating on the word of God, not meditating on the worldly things, that's not what I'm saying, meditate, get in the word of God, go through scripture, Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Make it open. Make it real to you. Trust God in the process. Because in that process, wow. See, when our values change, our whole perspective change, our walk change, our speech change, everything starts changing. But we need to make a choice. And I want to encourage you as, as Moses encouraged the people choose life choose life so father we come to you this morning lord we want to wow we are absolutely positioned for purpose and i pray that will burn that will burn in our hearts mightily in jesus name that we will truly experience everything that you have for us lord and that we'll become witnesses of your goodness and grace and lord even through the the the, the diverse things of life Lord, we just pray that we'll choose you every single day in every circumstance. When we have to say no to stuff, and put stuff behind us, not because it's our goodness, it's because of your goodness. When we move in, in power and might, Lord, it's because of you, not us. And so, Father, I pray, may we as a church, may we as, as individual Christians, may we as families, Grab hold of what you have for us and move mightily in our calling in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.